Today, let's bookend the tale of a Japanese superstar who went from the Thunderdome to the Tokyo Dome. I'm Mike Quackenbush, this is Till We Make It. And if you are passionate about the craft of professional wrestling, and you're never done learning all about it, then you've landed in the exact right place. So go ahead, join the Till We Make It tribe, do all the YouTube things, subscribe down below, ring the notification bell, please like this video, you can drop a comment down below as well, or if you'd like to take your support, your patronage of the Till We Make It project to the next level, consider joining our community over on Patreon. When you sign up, you're going to instantly get access to more than 50 Patreon-exclusive videos that have never appeared here on the channel, plus dozens of podcasts, book excerpts, and essays I've written all about professional wrestling. I just started posting some match analyses over there. I started with a favorite comedy match of mine. Follow the link in the description below to join us over on Patreon. Today, I want to share with you a story that contains a really valuable insight that I learned as part of my series, Icons and Insights. And this story begins about 15 years ago. Back in Season 5 of Chikara, my wrestling organization would often promote cards in rural parts of Pennsylvania extremely rural parts, so much so that a frequent stop for us back in 2006 was in a town, maybe city, maybe village, called Barnesville, where there were more barns than there were people. And I know that sounds like a joke, but that's really why it's called Barnesville. And the humble little volunteer fire company where we ran was lovingly referred to as the Barnesville Thunderdome. And the Barnesville Thunderdome saw more than its share of incredible professional wrestlers throughout the years. Not only the regular cast and characters of Chikara, like the guy you now know as Cesaro, but also some great guest stars, like John Moxley or Kazuchika Okada. And during this era, we frequently played host to graduates of Ultimo Dragon School down in Mexico. So you'd see people who were part of the Toyomon 2000 project term of the Ultimo Dragon Gym travel through Chikara as they made their way around the world getting some seasoning. And then later on, the Toriumon X term of students from the Ultimo Dragon School passed through Chikara. And before any of them would arrive, I would always ask them to please send me video of one of their current matches so I could get a sense of what they were like in the ring. And if they'd be a good fit with us at Chikara. And almost without exception, all of Ultimo Dragon's students, who were actually being trained by Jorge Rivera at the time, were outstanding in the ring. But I kept getting messaged by one of these trainees whose matches seemed, well, just average, maybe even a tad bland. He'd be based out of Florida, then he was based out of Texas, then he ping-ponged up to Canada, then he was back down in Florida. He was constantly writing, looking for the possibility of a booking. But the matches he seemed to be presenting were not very spectacular. Well, eventually it worked out that we happened to have a couple wrestlers coming down from Canada. This Okada fellow happened to be based in Canada during that month, and they said, we're going to bring him along. Maybe you could find a spot for him on the card. And I thought, well, what the heck, let's throw him in the ring and see what he can do. And we're going to travel back in time, 15 years, to November of 2006, and I'm going to show you right now just a little slice of Okada's one and only Chikara match. Oh, look at those chops right to the far end of Osiris. Yes! Oh, again, oh! No. Oh! Okada chopping Osiris down. One, two, two count only, kicks out. You may know that match is sometimes given the unfortunate label of being the worst match in Chikara history. And if that was all you ever saw of Kazuchika Okada, you might be shocked to learn 
This guy has headlined the Tokyo Dome. He's packed in the Japanese wrestling fans to see his modern classics against the likes of Kenny Omega and Hiroshi Tanahashi. It's difficult to imagine that this guy is now this guy. Although it's worth mentioning a whole lot of years pass between this match and Okada achieving main event status with New Japan Pro Wrestling, all of this does beg the question, how did the kid in that video from 15 years ago manage to go from boring the dozens of fans in the Barnesville Thunderdome to electrifying tens of thousands of fans inside the Tokyo Dome? And that's the insight I want to share with you today. Here's the key takeaway from the weird tale of Kazuchika Okada. You are not your worst match. You're not. It's just a moment in time. It's just one short episode in a long career or in a long life. And if you allow yourself to be haunted by that one bad match, then that chapter stays open. But like any embarrassing match or any embarrassing episode in your life, and take it from a guy who has plenty of embarrassing episodes in his life, you have to learn whatever you can from that experience. Change and grow who you are as a person or as a performer, and then close that chapter so you can move on to the next part of your career or the next part of your life. I bet if you asked him, even Okada himself would tell you that match in the Barnesville Thunderdome is not especially good. And if in that moment, people made up their mind that they would never give Okada another chance, that they would never watch another match of his, think about everything they would have missed out on later. If they were so judgmental as to decide that he is defined by this one embarrassing episode in his long career and even longer life, then they would have missed out on some of the most outstanding matches of the last 10 years. Without that bad match in Barnesville, we never get to Okada at the Tokyo Dome. You are not defined by the worst match you've ever wrestled, any more than you're defined by that one lousy promo that you had, or that embarrassing thing that happened in training, or that dumb thing you said on social media. These are just moments in time, and they do have some value if you can learn from them, if you can improve as a result of those episodes, but know when it's time to close those chapters and move on with your life and career. Exactly like Okada did after that not-so-barn-burner in Barnesville. The Icons and Insights series is coming to an end pretty soon here on the channel, but I've already started compiling them all into a playlist, so if you've missed any previous installments, go ahead and click on that now so you can keep on learning. Or if you want to find out more about the emergence of New Japan Pro Wrestling, or the impact of the Ultimo Dragon Gym in Mexico on wrestling worldwide, check out my book, Pro Wrestling History. Six Threads and Sixteen Decades is available right now over on Audible, where I'll read you the audiobook myself.